Uh, for many years, I think my family was the biggest Hare Krishna family in Brazil. Imagine, my mom, she was Christian, evangelical, mm-hmm. Protestant, very fanatical. Popular in Brazil. Popular in Brazil. She finds a black deity with a big eyes, Lord Jagannath, and she looked at him, she said, well, he's God. You know, like many times I was walking to my school, and on the way to the school, I see a dead body that was shot in the last night. Fresh. There. This is a reality, people. This is a reality, yeah. 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 It's nice to hear these things that you're sharing because I think it gives the opportunity for the people to have this maturity to say, let's get it right from the beginning. Let's not make the mistakes and then have to correct it 10 years later, 20 years later. Qualified devotees that do so many beautiful things, Shastra, Mridanga, Kirtan, which betray their wife. No, I'm pretty I'm, I'm with you 100% on this. <laughs> so, how can, I, how can I criticize? One of the things that I've observed, tell me if I'm wrong, about ISKCON is, um, and I say this with all due respect. Jai Gurudev Param Jyoti Das. Jai Gurudev Swami Levatikanta. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm very happy to have you on the podcast. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> so, I think this is um, a conversation that you and I and others have had in pieces in different moments of our friendship, but I think it's cool to have this in one go so that everybody can understand a little bit because your background is unique in Bhakti Marga. You were born into a Vaishnava movement, into the Hare Krishna movement, and obviously you had your whole upbringing in that, which in this generation of devotees here, nobody had because most of us all met Guruji already as adults, or in my case, I met him when I was 15, but still... I think it's a big, big difference. I would say it's a big difference, but not that much big. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> and so I would love for you to 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 share. You've been with Guruji now for the last five, six years, and I think people have heard a lot from you and, and, and seen you around, and I think it'd be really nice to know a little bit more about how you got here and the journey that, that took you here, because I think that's that's something special that people can understand different perspectives from, and I would love to hear some of that. So, so... From well, the beginning. Well, all what I can say that just like remind what Guruji was saying a couple of days ago about gratitude, you know. Mm-hmm. I think spiritual path is about gratitude. When I came to Bhakti Marga, I didn't come to Bhakti Marga because I was like, okay, my life with with the East Con or with Shila Prabhupada or with uh, I have nothing, nothing against the, all of them. Actually, all what I have is gratitude. But in somehow, many times in my life, I had to like stop thinking for a minute. Did I ask you for it? Hey, Krishna, have I, have I asked you for it? And that was the point of conflict. But still, I, I should have gratitude. You know, like sometimes when I'm sitting with Guruji and he's having some talk or he's giving satsang and he look at me and he said, where, where is the verse that Krishna... And then I can be able to support his talk. Well, I have a background that could give me mm-hmm. in the way that I can manage it and support my Guru Devan on his on his mission. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, no, no, I mean, that gratitude principle is very important. 100% Guruji was talking about that, but I'm curious how you got to get that gratitude because, as you said, there's a lot of moments in life where we question a little bit like, you know, why am I going through this? I didn't ask for this, whatever. But if we start from the beginning, so you were born, your mother was a devotee? Yeah. Correct? So... What was that like, your earliest memories, let's say? Well, you see, it's actually really interesting because my mom, she became devotee on the beginning of the Hare Krishna movement in Brazil. So at the, that moment, when everything was just like coming like a news, what is, what is the news that is going on around? And how the Christian consciousness come to my family? It's also funny because my uncle, he was sitting in the bus a Hare Krishna devotee comes and he finds, uh, and he was like given this book, mm-hmm. Shri Shapanishad. Mm-hmm. And when he, my, my uncle, he grabbed the book, there was, were written, all descendants of Bharat. You know? mm-hmm. But the word Bharat in Portuguese means cockroach. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And when he looked, he started to laugh. And he went to my mom and he said, look, this book says that we are descendants of cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> So they went to the temple and they found out that we we actually, who is Bharat, you know? So. (laughs) What a a, a reason for (laughs) coming, amazing, amazing. What what a reason, (laughs) just because of of the word cockroach. Yeah, amazing. 
<laughs> and uh and since the beginning when my mom she came to the temple imagine my mom she was christian evangelical mm-hmm. protestant very fanatical popular in brazil popular yeah. in brazil and when she comes she finds a black deity with a big eyes lord jagannath and she looked to him she said wow he's god i have no doubt in my in my heart instantly instantly wow instantly and she was always like very proud of it she says always since the first time when i came to the temple and i looked at the deity i knew that uh, that was a puff that was a puff and she not just like brought the family her children but also uncles aunties cousins you know for many years i think my family was the biggest hare krishna family in brazil in, in, in literally in the point of a quantity quantity mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, people mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. and that, that's really nice because to see everybody like doing the same thing but uh, a black sheep should be born there <laughs> <laughs> that's me enter pritu <laughs> But but you know it's just to stop there what is funny is is people always think that to join us something like this you have to be convinced you have to have some big internal debate and conflict and the philosophy has to be you know all of this and I think the truth of the matter is so often so often in these cases there are people who just recognize something internally and it's not that they can even express it externally exactly why but they just feel it immediately like this is where I belong or this is truth or this is whatever and i and i wish more people would appreciate the value of that because it's a real thing it's it's real i mean look at that you you yeah. have a religious background you see something like that and you, immediately you're you're sure yeah. who can tell them they're wrong like on what basis and and i think i just people should rec- should value inner experience more mm-hmm. and they really respect it for example if in, even when we look in the story of some swamis like Japatak Maharaj for example. Mm-hmm. Japatak Maharaj he was walking in Toronto and he saw the devotee when he saw the tilak on the devotee he started to cry. <laughs> who can explain that? He started to cry and he said, "Who are you? I I'm looking to your to this thing on your face and I'm crying. What is that? Tell me please." Yeah. yeah that that's I agree 100%. That needs to be contended with we have to understand that this is something real and and more respect for that but yeah so your and, family yeah and uh black sheep we were we were at black sheep i was the black sheep but that's the point of like where everything starts because okay i was born i was not that uh that like my mom was planning to have me she already had three children and uh you were the fourth. I was, i'm the fourth and she was already 44 years old wow. she was not so so mm-hmm, young mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that happened that she just like went and she found my father they slept one night that's it and when she comes back to the temple and she figured out that she was pregnant she was feeling completely ashamed and my brothers were feeling ashamed of my mother you know that's also and uh how old was the oldest brother at the time 18 18 it was 18 year gap 18 years a gap wow yeah and uh and th- and there was a shock you know like this you no know, even my mom she shares she used to share a story that once she was hold me mm-hmm. i was uh, like a baby and one devotee was uh was given a satsang and he was saying the lecture you no know, like he, he was saying something like really really heavy mm-hmm. really not nice you know something like uh, yeah it's a, a person that uh a be- a bad soul when they incarnated in this material world he comes without parent and he was using this term that the krishna that arjuna actually tells the krishna the bhagavad gita of varna sanskara mm-hmm. which means a uh, undesirable population yeah. that they comes without a structure mm-hmm. any family structure mm-hmm. and then she look and she you know she start to cry because she was having like a baby and she had also dira krishna my other brother with five years old and she was looking like i'm alone i'm a mo- I'm lonely mother i have nothing there's and no father figure no me. father figure mm-hmm. and that's what uh, all the points start because I, i grew up in that environment of course i remember things that was amazing for example I remember that uh, in the temple they had one big picture of narasimha deva killing ranakashpu that famous one mm-hmm. i used to come with a two years old and look to that and without you know like without understand why i was looking and they felt like wow it's amazing Oh when I was four years old, my brother once was given satsanga and he was saying, yes, yeah, like uh, 
Rupa Goswami, he says on his Upadashamrita, Vacho Vegam Manasakra Davegam, Jiuha Vegam Darapashta Vegam. And as soon as he said this look, I repeated. Four years old. For like the first time, the first sloka he said one time and I repeated. Wow. Pretty is a great soul. Oh, Krishna. No, it's not about that. But uh, I, we can see the samskaras and we see even how to use all these tendencies, all these qualities into the devotional service to Guruji, to Krishna. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was, I think it was my main gift in this life. To be able to grow up in such environment without to understand why I'm there, what is the reason why I'm here, do I need it or not? Sometimes I just wish to be like a normal kid and have a Christmas party and have a normal gift. No. Did you go to normal school or, or did you go to Gurukul? Like how was the, the, the split, let's say? Or? Yeah. So when I was six years old, my mom, she was serving the temple of, in the south of Brazil. Mm-hmm. And there was one devotee. He was the, the manager of the temple. He's like a very famous general, to be known as a general. His name is Harakanta Prabhu. And uh, he was pushing my mom. He was saying to my mom that uh, I should move to Gurukul. He said that the system should be, the, the education system should be well based. And he said, if Prithu stays here, he will just grow up in among all these devotees. And actually, I was not behaving so good. Because How old were you this time? I was six. Six. Six not years behaving old. so good. Not behaving so good. <laughs> I was like, you know, I had some. Bad tendency, good tendency, but also had bad. Some other some scars. Yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and he said to my mom that she she, she should send me to the Gurukula, and the and that this was the most like it was the first uh, traumatic episode of my life, you know, because I remember well when my brother he was take me to to go like to to the way like going and I look back I see my mom in the house look at me and crying and yeah that's tough no that's did tough. your brothers go to gurukul yeah all of them all all of them who spent more time in the gurukul was my middle brother his name is ramakumara he went to it the age of like if i'm not wrong 8 and he stayed till 28 wow he stayed like for 20 years, the Brahmachari living. And uh, and also Dira went, Dira was nine and he left with, uh, I think, 15. Mm-hmm. And, and you went with six? And they left around 10. Okay, and then you went to regular school? Afterwards. Then I went to regular school. Okay. Yeah. How was it at Gurukul? Like what was the, the, the memories you have about Gurukul? Well, you see, the first, the first, because the Gurukul was in the in this uh, Iskon farm in Brazil, it's called Nova Gokul, which you visit this year. Yeah, yeah. no, it's really nice with to Guruji. bring with Guruji to bring to had the chance to bring Guruji there. It was really nice, and uh, all day it was completely like in the full of spiritual activity. We had to wake up every day at three o'clock a.m. and uh, take a shower. Just imagine, like go up the hill to the temple, walking. At that time, the, the our house up there didn't have uh, electricity. We all had candles. So just imagine the house with the two Prabhus and the 50 children, 50 kids, <laughs> you know, oh. without the light. The, the, the shower was a gas shower. And uh, we had like to get everybody ready and go to the Mangalarati. Then come to Mangalarati, we had the prayers, the morning prayers, mm-hmm. you know. Then after morning prayers, we had to chant Japa. Then after Chant Japa, we used to go to one place near to the temple, in that point where we were like chanting Brahma Sanhita or Purukshashuta, some, some, some Samhita, yeah, like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we were chanting, and after that, we come again for the Darshanarati. And after Darshanarati, we used to go to lunch, no, to breakfast, and breakfast school. And the school we have divide. We had the Sanskrit, but also we had the like mathematic yeah, or... Yeah. Normal was a normal school for full time until three o'clock, and at four o'clock we had dinner and go to bed. For oh, of course, f- if you're waking up at three yeah. a.m., like <laughs> so, you go to bed by four or five something like that. Four this. or five, yeah, the, because I, I was the, the 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 small generation. Yeah, the middle they could go at five, and the bigger ones could go at six to the bed. Wow, big boy is going <laughs> to bed at six. Well, yeah, it's, it, this, this is what I mean. It's a completely different context, and and people don't know. They just don't know that this is like a lifestyle that is going on. And I had, I had a, 
a debate, kind of a conversation with somebody whether we should go down this direction of making gurukuls also for Bhakti Marga because we don't at the moment, right? Yeah. And Guruji, I spoke to him and he was like, um, of course it's very important to educate. We have like a Sunday school program with the kids mm-hmm. here around the community and all of this. But he said the problem is is that, you know, more and more in society to to to, to have parents trust your kids to you full time for that kind of, you know, situation intensity of situation is very difficult it's very difficult i think more and more it's not so popular to do this kind of thing and i think second also is a lot of commitment and responsibility like as you said two prabhus with all these kids it's a yeah. lot of responsibility you have to take on yeah and i'm always on this dilemma like it would be wonderful because you would get higher quality devotees technically speaking that's the idea but it's a lot of yeah, responsibility but in other sense also we can we can take a picture and they can point to how many of them are still in the Christian consciousness I wanted to get to that yeah yeah no. you know how many times I had for example met schoolmates in the bar instead of the temple many times many times actually let's talk about that so y- you left Gurukul you went to normal school at 10 I have had a few conversations not many but with people Gurukulis as well mm-hmm. and they almost always tell me the the minute they could they went away from everything had a normal life tried everything drinks drugs whatever do you, did you clearly you're saying that there was a lot of that going on there as well why do you think it happens you see i think uh, you know like sometimes people ask me you know why do you love guruji so much and uh, besides everything besides of him being a sadguru besides of him being um different personality as we know special yeah special besides of everything he has one nature that um, maybe many devotees right now in Bhakti Marga they don't appreciate but he knows how to build a family mm-hmm. and many people they left not because they hate the system or because oh there is one say of Shila Prabhupada here in this book which I completely disagree It's because of the sense of family. Sometimes we just like, I will give an explanation, one good example to you. Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago, I was sitting with one Swami. Iskon? Iskon. Mm-hmm. And this Swami, he was celebrating 40 years that he had to take sannyasi initiation from Prabhupada. And I asked him, Maharaj, um, how did you manage? How did you manage to still be here after 40 years? And he stopped, he started to cry, and he said, look, one thing I have to tell you, many times in my life I wanted to leave. Many times I wanted to jump completely out from Christian consciousness, from my mission, from everything. But by Krishna's grace, I have good friends. And all the times when I wanted to leave, these good friends, I used to come and reveal my, my mind to them and tell what was going inside of my heart. And they used to hold me and say, Maharaj, look, who are you? If you, you go, I also will have to go. Mm. So the main point of um, why many of them have left, the point is the family. They is missing this family feelings, this feeling that um, I should be grateful. And, I, and, and, and just look, okay, you are not just Swami Ravatikanta, you are also a human being. And mm-hmm. I needed to learn how to see the human being inside of you. Because if you just see, yes, Samira Vatikanta is the right arm of Paramahansa Vishwananda. He's a very good preacher. He speaks, has a beautiful knowledge. and But there's a human side. And if you do For not sure. touch into, into your human side and embrace you as a human being, what is the use? What is the use of life? And that's what the point where many people had left. And, he, and this time he said to me, yes, I never left because I have good friends. And all the time they were pushing me and remind me, who am I? And what is my mission? And that's what I really appreciate. And what I really appreciate in the many Gurukulus people, many guys who had left the Christian consciousness, or who had left the spiritual path, or they are completely lost in life, is this feeling. Because when we sat together and we started to talk and say, what is your fear? My fear is to be abandoned again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because many of them have this feeling, like I was abandoned. My mom, for example, uh, I brought this year here one really good friend of mine, Brindavana Chandra. He was singing the Just Love Festival. I remember, yeah. Well, imagine him. He was six years old, 
his parents sent him to Vrindavan Gurukul. And when they sent him to the Vrindavan, they just like left him there without speaking English, without knowing the language, without knowing the culture, without knowing nothing. And the first day when he went to, to take uh, water to drink, he went on the tap and he put water, the water came green. And when he put on his mouth, imagine Vrindavana yeah. in 1996, no, actually 1993. Imagine how <laughs> the water was completely salty and, and he didn't have water to drink. And he didn't know because the water was salty. And what he was doing, he was, because all the sun that they used to make like a lemon juice, and he was taking lemon juice, put in a bottle and hiding and keeping some hidden places in the, in the, the Gurukul. And that's what he was drinking during the week because he didn't know where to find water to drink. <laughs> you know, it's tough, you know. But in one sense, he's still chanting. He's still inside of the movement. And what makes him to be inside of the movement? He says because of his guru. Because he, when he, he was like on the moment that he wants to stress out and, and get out, he went to India and he went to his Gurudev and his Gurudev said, hey, come on, I will help you. And it was the same thing that happened to me. Mm-hmm. When I was the point that I was completely stressed out and I said, okay, I'm done, Krishna. I don't want to follow anymore. Maybe I will become a Christian. I had the chance, the good fortune to meet Guruji. And he sat with me and he said, look, I will not judge you. I will not criticize you. I will not do anything because all what I want from you I don't want, to, you know, like he said, I don't want nothing from you. All what I want is that you feel happy to be around the devotees. He said to me, it's here in Shipit and Ilaya five years ago. You know, when you, when you say all this stuff and, and, and your point about getting to know the person as a human being, I often feel like the interactions we have are so idealistic like utopian like we're living in a situation where it's like oh we're all devotees this is how a devotee society should be and you have the textbook describing the perfect version of it but like you said behind all of these roles and personalities are are just real human beings with emotions and with with challenges with some scars with so many things like honestly so many things that people don't know and i've always said to people imagine we all walk around with like a label on our forehead saying, you know, I'm in this mood now, or I have this history, or I have this whatever, just so that somebody can understand me 5% more. It's not possible, you know. Mm. And so you need to have a culture that accepts that side of people more and stops looking at them and judging them and comparing them by a standard that is a goal. But it's like when you look at a compass and you have the north and you, you know which direction to go, but it doesn't mean you're there yet. It just means that's the direction I want to go. And I think we're too quick to judge people based on a perfect vision of how it should be instead of how it is now. And then we can hold hands and we can be together and say, okay, guys, we all want to go north together. Then we help each other go north. Yeah. But if we all expect perfection from each other, we're going to get disappointed. And one disappointment, two disappointments, five disappointments, 10 disappointments, don't be shocked if everybody starts to walk away. And I'm, then, who is the guilty for that? Uh, ah, because... Of, path, guru, yeah. uh, Krishna, God, whatever. No, the big targets. The big, the big targets where it could take, they can take all the blame. Yes, exactly. But you know, I was thinking also, because, because of what you said, there's this, there's this family thing that maybe Bhakti Marga people are not appreciative enough of, of what he's doing. Why I like to listen to what you're saying is because we are in a in a in a different phase. I mean, we're almost twenty years now of Bhakti Marga as a movement, but still, it feels like we're very young and, and very much in the beginning. Twenty years feels wrong. I sometimes look at twenty years and I'm like, <laughs> I mean, part of me thinks it's forty, part of me thinks it's just five or ten. Like, it, it, it's a bizarre, it's a bizarre <laughs> feeling. But so many ashrams are opening and starting, and and I already think like, this is the start. I want to see how it is five years from now, 10 years from now, and we'll go through all of these difficulties and we go through all of these challenges. But it's nice to hear these things that you're sharing because I think it gives the opportunity for the people to have this maturity to say, let's get it right from the beginning. Let's not make the mistakes and then have to correct it 10 years later, 20 years later. And so maybe you know some people also that, as I said, they walked away, but then they came back also. Yeah. 
what do you think brings them back? You see, it's not easy to forget. <laughs> I remember once, I was like 21, 22. I was sitting in a bar. Literally, I was drinking. I was using drugs. I was with uh, some girls around me. You know, like, um, it's going to have like a... Well, actually, we also have you now these four principles that should not eat meat, no alcoholic, yeah. no gambling, and uh, no illicit sex. I, w I can tell that I was like almost breaking all the principles at the same time. <laughs> What, <laughs> at once. Com combo night. A combo night, yeah. you know, the kit night. Mm -hmm. And there was a point when I, I was in that situation... And in my mind, Really, in that situation? In that situation. In that situation, I was thinking, oh, mind, please focus on the lotus feet of the Nanda Maharaj's son, that mm -hmm. Krishna. I think it's not possible to forget, you know. It's not possible to forget Krishna. And if you have your life of gratitude, you always will think about Krishna. Maybe you will like him, maybe you will hate him, But it's him. <laughs> it's all about him. And I think that's the point. Because it's not so easy to forget. Even if you try the material world, and if you go through all the situation, and if you see, it's not possible to forget. It's funny, you reminded me of something. When I, mm. when I first met Guruji, I, as I said, I was 15. Mm -hmm. I had nothing against God. <laughs> I thought God is fine but also not so important. My life was good. Um, but the first time I met him, Guruji, it was... I'm trying to think now how old he was. He was like 27. Wow. He was 27. And he, he had such a smile on his face. I remember I walked into the room where he was. It was an interview. So he used to do these things called interviews where he would give you like 15 minutes and you can go and you can ask him some questions and we can have a conversation. <laughs> And my mom found out about this. And so she said, we're going to go meet this young master. And my whole family went, like me, my mom, my uncle, my grandmother, my sister, my stepfather, everybody, all Brazilian. They all went. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember walking into this room and he was just sitting there in his chair with such a huge smile on his face. And I remember sitting there, all my family, they were all obviously older than me, adults talking to him one-on-one -on -one first. And I was just sitting on the side watching him thinking what does he know that I don't know because this smile is like the greatest smile I've ever seen in my life he knows something that I don't know he's happier for some reason that I don't understand okay we had some interaction after it was fine but what I remember distinctly is that for the next year everything I did that I used to do before with much pleasure I could not enjoy it anymore because his smile would always come into my mind <laughs> And I would compare how I was feeling to that smile. And I would say, oh, it's not the same. And I lost over. taste for the things that I loved to do because of that one smile. It was game over, like you said. But it was this comparison that I was just like, I I'm, 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 in a, I'm, in a, I'm stuck. And until I get a smile like that or I understand why he has that smile, I'm finished. Yeah. And I get your point. We cannot forget certain things. We can't. That's why Prabhupada Dada Sarasvati, he says, no? mm -hmm. uh, that famous quote, if you do not want to lose the material desires, don't go to the bank of Yamuna because there is a blackish boy. And as soon as you, f you see him, you, you will lose completely the taste. Yeah. And even when I see friends of mine that they are trying in the material world like uh, to find some happiness into this drug, into this drinking, into this type of relationship, they end up always into the same place. And they come back after some time, when they come back, they said, yeah, I think something is, is missing. Yeah. And this is the point where I really love to be Guruji's devotee. Because they look at me, they said, well, we came from the same source, but now you are shining a little bit different. Show me about the shyness. And when they come in, in touch with Guruji, they said, yeah, I get your point. I get your point. It's, it's a good thing you just touched upon. So obviously you had a lot of friendships and connections in ISKCON, in, in Gaudiya Vaishnavism in general. Obviously you grew up the, your whole life there. But now for the last five, six years you're with Guruji. What has been the interactions that you've had? Like 
positive, negative? How has it been in general? Talking to these people from your past and like your friends. Who knows me from childhood? They're still the same. Nothing has changed. And you, you, I think you saw a little bit a of. Yeah, 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 you yeah. met a few of yeah, them. Yeah. So nothing has changed. The one that came in the later generation, many of them has left me, has left the, the friendship. Because you joined. Bakhti because Marga. I joined Bakht Margo. Because I joined Guruji. Yeah. And how I know that Instagram style. So if you haven't follow me, <laughs> <laughs> I know the reason. <laughs> Instagram stalking. We know. We know. Yeah. Um, but have you had actual conversations with any of them? Like, did any of them reach out to you and try to ask you why and, and all of this, like why you, you left? That's a good point because those who have come to me to ask is who was looking for help. It's just those who, is, who are looking for help. They came to ask, who is Swami Vishwananda? What can you tell me about him? Just right now, I was in Vrindavan with Guruji and one friend, he came and I show him to Guruji. Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, I went to have a chai with him and I was explaining to him and he was shocked. He was saying, you know, since when I had his darshan in Brazil, I felt so much love inside of me. I had, I felt, you know, I'm not, what I have been feeling is not, a, it's not something ordinary. It's not something that you can find anywhere. That's what, and this is the point that makes me to love Guruji more and more. Because, you know, like, what he's given to me, it's not because, ah, Prito is nice, a pretty special, I will give it to him. No, he gives to everybody. Yeah. When we look at Krishna, for example, in the Rasa dance, what, what about everything about the Rasa dance? What, what makes the Rasa dance so special? It's because the Krishna, he was given the same love that he was given to Radharani. He was given to all the gopis simultaneously. And this is the main proof that he's a Sadhguru, because a Sadhguru is the one who can fulfill the pleasure, the, the heart of everybody. Yeah. He doesn't make distinction. And when you talk with him, interact, you, you will see like, well, I have a place in his heart. For sure. And, and I think people sometimes make a distinction between, they look at people who are qualified for Seva, they say, oh, you know, Prithu, he knows sh- he knows some Shastra, he knows this, he knows that, or he plays Murdanga very nicely. That's why he is dear to Guruji. <laughs> no. And I think you, you're, you're, mi- you're mixing things. One thing is competence and qualification for Seva, Another thing is competence and qualification for a relationship with, with your guru and with God. You can be the most simple person with no qualifications for nothing. But if you have love in your heart, you have sincerity in your heart, you have all the qualifications you need for a relationship with Guruji and with God. And I, and I would wish that people don't confuse these two things because so much comparison comes into it. Jealousy and then judgments. And not only for you, for in all directions. From I, I see it in myself sometimes. I recognize that tendency that is inside there mm-hmm. to look at somebody and, and compare, to look at somebody and say why they get this kind of attention and not this kind of attention, why that person who I think is more deserving doesn't get it, and to just completely exit this mindset. And I think this transcends all religious borders. I see it in Christianity, I see it in Iskon, I see it in everywhere where I've had some opportunity to to look and meet with people and speak with people. There's so much of comparison going on. And everybody looking at their neighbor like trying to understand what is the qualification for, for getting that special something, that love that that really fulfills me because everybody is just wanting to be fully satisfied by that love. <laughs> there is an expression in Portuguese. You know? We say it... Uh... Você pode ver as, as bebidas que eu tomo, você vai ver os tombos que eu levo. You, know? oh. so you can you can see the drinks the, the, that I have, but you don't see how many times like I. Yeah, you like you see the the drinks I knock back, but you don't see the 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 knockdowns that I've had. The, the knockdown like that, that I have. No? Yeah. So the the point is that only you know what you have going through. Only you know. Yeah. Ah, Guruji, among three hundred people, he came only to Prit and he gave a hug and Prit and say Happy New Year. <laughs> Ah, Guruji only loves Prito. Ah, how many times I spend my New Year's or my Christmas without parents, without nobody, alone in the room? Yeah. <laughs> People don't know. People don't, don't know. know. Context. <laughs> you don't know. By the way, let me just make a point here. Uh-huh. We could be having this conversation in Portuguese the whole time, but we are doing this in English out of our love and affection for you, the audience and listeners. Okay? And I'm really struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> talking about that just yesterday, because I, I didn't, I didn't go to the New Year celebration. 
Uh-huh. I was because I was I was with Guruji. I was in the program, and then I knew there was going to be Kirtan. And we were going to be doing Arti Kirtan, all of this, and the next morning I'll be Shekham. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, Guruji leaves in in a couple of days. He's going to be going traveling soon. Um, by the time this episode comes out, you know, New Year's will have gone by. But I was sitting there. I need to do seva because I need to present some stuff to Guruji before he travels. He's going to be gone for quite a while, so yeah. I'm not going to go. I, I need to sleep and I need to get to seva immediately. So I did that. And I was a bit, I watched the live stream. I'm in my room. I'm in the ashram mm-hmm. to, to, for context. I'm sitting in the ashram watching the live stream of the ashram. Like he, Guruji is in the temple and I'm just there like doing some seva watching live stream. And I was a bit sad, like thinking, it's okay. I'm, I'm doing the right thing. I know I need to be doing this seva, but because Guruji was dancing and he was jumping up and down, having a great time mm-hmm. yesterday. And then around the afternoon, he comes into my room and I think, oh, long time he didn't come in my room. And he comes in my room and he just walks up to me and gives me a hug. And I was like, okay, we're hugging. This is fantastic. I give him a hug. And he says, Happy New Year. I didn't see you at the party. I just wanted to come and say Happy New Year. And I said, oh, thank you. Happy New Year. Like, And I bow down. But I was really, it's these small things also that people don't see and that is personal between you and him and, and, and you and Krishna. And then I think if that is something they don't see in the physical world, because it happens in my room, how much we don't see in the inner world that is going on in their minds, in their hearts, between them, between Krishna and, and these devotees. And I just think, wow. It, it, it sometimes humbles you to such a point where you feel, why do I even open my mouth and talk about anyone ever? Like, I, you, you can't function that way. Eventually, you have to feel free to just risk some, you know, conversation. But, man, you just really don't know what, what is going on with anybody. And you think you understand and you think you know who is dear and who is not dear and who is good and who is not good. And it's just nonsense. Yeah. That's why even when uh, we were organizing the Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. It was historic event. And, five thousand uh, people. Five thousand people and everything. Paulo. And um all the time I was like telling to myself, I wanna I don't wanna be the best, I wanna do the best. I don't want to be the best, I wanna do my best. Yeah. And uh and Guruji he sees it. He really sees who wants to do the best. Even in your case, it can look like, oh, okay, Revati was just like working, thinking about uh, his business, his management, what he has to do. Yeah. But he knows. He knows. He knows your heart. He knows what is going on in your mind. He knows everything. That's for sure. Yeah. And if we don't appreciate that on him, we would not appreciate enough in our life. That's why he comes, he hugs, he says, I love you, he's a happy new year. Yeah. But the point is, what makes you to deserve that? <laughs> Deserving is actually it's funny. One of my last, um, you know, I started this new thing on my podcast now where I react to videos on the internet and stuff. And so I was talking about grace and, and there was one, he's a Catholic bishop and he was mm-hmm. a bishop baron and he was talking about the undeserved gift of grace. This is grace, it's undeserved. And I this was never what I have learned. I have always been taught that Grace is, is on and God's love is something that you you deserve. It's disproportionate. You give a little bit, Krishna gives everything, but yeah. still you must do something. There's some exchange. There's some sincerity. There's some effort. There's something that you must give. Something you must do. You know, nine twenty six. No, even if you give one drop of water, some leaf, flower, that is that is acceptable. But something has to be there. So something has it's to not be nothing. there. Yeah. If you give nothing, it's all fine, right? And so I was thinking about that, and I was just laughing to myself how much we complicate what is actually so simple because really how how difficult is it to ask of yourself just make some sincere effort and sincerity is the is the key word because sincerity includes in it an honest attempt to do your best because if you don't try to do your best consciously if you consciously say i, I just do something it doesn't have to be my best it's not sincere anymore because you're some, there's some cheating principle in there like you're trying to cheat your way to some success, to some what grace, whatever is coming, because you think this is the equation. I do something, I get something back. But mm-hmm. if I do something very simple, easy, and cheap, maybe I get the same result anyway. And you try it, but it doesn't work that way. And Gregory Gr- 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 said, "You will get back as you give." Like in the sense that if you give it with, you know, ten percent willingness, then Krishna will give ten percent 
of his heart to you in a sense, which is still wonderful. But it, it's these moments that really remind me of like, um, I really need to to push myself to the limit because when I hear your story and and story of people around you that you that you met. I don't want to be repeating myself here, but gratitude is like, yeah, thank you for catching me at 15 mm. and for let, not letting go of me. And even moments when I was going left, going mm. right, that I never had to to walk away to understand what I had missed and come back. That That you just kept me here the whole time with you. But I also understand when I look back, Jesus, I was terrible. Like... <laughs> You have to, Guruji, you, you, the biggest miracle he did was to have patience with me yeah. so that I could become something useful. Britu, like, you don't understand. Sometimes people come, <laughs> I'll tell a story. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to expose a brother of mine, Swami Tulsi Das. Uh-huh. So the two of us, we were living in the ashram already since we were teenagers, right? And we were very close friends, best of friends. And in the early days of the ashram here, very like they're very different less people everything a bit more relaxed we were working in two offices next to each other we had a wall in between the offices so he was working for Atma Kriya Yoga and I was working in media so I was making videos and different things like this Mm -hmm. and there was major parts of the day where I was alone in the office and so what we used to do is I had my laptop he had his laptop we used to play video games (laughs) like LAN connection together through the wall because we always used to sit and nobody could see our screen so we were playing together for like two, three, four, five hours a day no problem (laughs) And everybody thinks, wow, these guys are working all day in the office. This is amazing. They're producing and we're just so much. They're like playing video games together, having the greatest time. And I'm thinking to myself, Guruji knew. And he was inviting me for dinner and he was like pretending like nothing was going on. And then one day, he walks up to me and told us and he says, So, it's very nice this friendship you both have, but I'm going to ask you something. Mm. I want you to not talk to each other anymore. And I thought, but this is the end of the friendship. Like, what do you mean not talk? <laughs> don't spend time. Don't talk. Nothing. And I said, but can he still be my best friend? He said, of course. He can be your best friend. Just don't talk to him and don't spend time with him. <laughs> and I thought... Blow the mind. <laughs> okay. And then he said, because your negativity plus his negativity makes beautiful negativity. Wow. And it's not good for both of you. So he knew from the beginning. But... Instead of saying, oh, you're terrible, get out of here, whatever, he just said, let me help you guys by separating you two. And when he separated us, we, we, we obeyed it, of course. There was no fun. I didn't want to play by myself, you know. I was already a little bit older and I thought, ah, I can drop these habits. After three years, he allowed us to talk again. Wow. Three years later, it was completely different. Because what habits did he develop by himself? What habits did I develop by myself? He was sleeping with Tulsi every night. He, we had a Tulsi greenhouse. He would go and sleep with her. He was praying. He was doing nursing, nursing with Sahasranam every day. He was doing so many things like this that he just found interest in. And I started doing my knowledge stuff. I was reading and studying. Da, 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 da. And so we come together and suddenly it's like, okay, my positivity and his positivity makes beautiful positivity. And so I, I sometimes tell people like, wow, I'm not a clean here like I was in the ashram honestly abusing because I'm here people you know Guruji is putting food on my plate bed under me and I'm here playing video games not doing any saver pretending to be some great person you know now okay this was many years ago so (laughs) please Uh, you're free you're free free. but but I think sometimes people people don't know and they assume things and and I think it's important for us to understand evolution yeah but what's beautiful what you say in the beginning you know like what you offer and uh, what you can get back. Yeah. And especially when you don't look. And we see this main example is Draupadi. Mm-hmm. When when Krishna, he kills Shishupala and his Darshan Chakra, he cut a little bit of his finger, she grabbed the Sari, just die. And what Krishna, he did it back? He gave a sari. Sari, unlimited Sari for her. Give a little cloth and he gives <laughs> unlimited cloth. So, beautiful. And the same point, how, how he managed to make you to, to grow up. When he when Guruji he comes and says, Okay, you guys stop to to chat. It's tough. Yeah. Because you were like uh, with who can you open your mind? With who can you be friends? Can be yourself. But God. I had to turn to God. <laughs> yeah, you had to turn to God. But at the same time, 
you went to Shastras. Yeah. You went to, to learn the scriptures and you could make what nowadays is the most important service on Bhakti Marga because you were building people. <laughs> so it's not a loss. No, no, for sure. And, and, for and, sure. and, the, same, and the same thing what, what I have going through. Okay, Krishna consciousness is nice, it's amazing. The way that they, they, they build me, it was nice, it's, it's amazing. Now I can see everything, how, how much it was u- useful, yeah. all, all these things. And why it was so useful? Because I could have a chance, for example, nowadays to perform some service to him based on my personal experiences, life experiences. You know, like... Let me touch on those life experiences, actually, yeah. because I just thought something. Wouldn't it be nice if you could share, because you did what you did, for example, you play Murdanga very nicely. You have good knowledge. Like, these things were taught to you at a young age, Gurukul? Yes, I can say yes and also no. Okay. Because but- why? Because when I was like 12 years old, uh, after Gurukul closing, and then I went to a bit of the south of Brazil. Then my brother, my old brother, he was working in the prison in Brazil. Mm-hmm. And the prison that he was working, it was in Franco da Rocha, which is like uh, one of the most um, criminal city of Brazil. Okay. The high density, like uh, there they kill like, people right, for nothing. Right. Extreme you know? violence, yeah. I, you know, like many times I was walking to my school, and on the way to the school I see a dead body that was shot in the last night. Mm-hmm. Fresh, there. This is a reality people This is a reality, yeah. 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 So then- I, I, I lived years in Rio and it was like, it's just a time of night. Why you just that's it. You don't go out. Forget about it. And there's yeah. places you don't go. Every single apartment has um like a like a fence with, with big metal spikes and and a guard sitting there. And it's just normal life. And you don't think about it. You don't yeah. not afraid, but you understand this is just the way it is and you don't go to certain things. But. And before when there were were no social medias, no mobiles where people were recording, it was more free, you know. Yeah, What's the name of that move? There's one move that he Or City of God. No, 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 no. One move that uh like when you have a free day to do any crime, any crime uh, 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 in, um, in America, we uh, yeah okay. <laughs> I know the day. I know the movie. Some yeah. horror movie kind of. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah. So it was like that, you know, a little bit. So then we moved to this city. It's called Franco da Rocha, and in the city we had uh, we built a temple there. So this temple, uh, we became actually very famous. Just sharing some stories, no. Couple of times, like for example, we used to every day to feed the people, people who li- who lives there. And actually, I really wants to bring Guruji there. And I think we will make this <laughs> for this year. <laughs> so this temple of Franco da Rocha, uh, we we used to do a lot of social service. Okay. And because of this social service, like giving food, food for life, all these things. We build a very strong reputation in the city. So when you come to the Franco da Rocha, everybody knows the Hari Krishnas. Oh, Hari, 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 you know. So I went to the school in the city. I was, I was living there. I was doing all my, my, my things there. And uh, just once I remember a story, a funny story. A friend of mine, he went to for Sankirtan mm-hmm. to do book distribution in the city, in Sao Paulo. And on, on the way back, he was in the bus. And he was in the bus with his mobile, laptop, you know, <laughs> like er- everything. <laughs> but he was dressed as a Hare Krishna. He was dressed with a dhoti, with yeah. tilaka. And the bandits, they came inside to rob the bus. And when they, they came to, to take all his stuff, they looked at him and said, no, no, don't mess with this guy because when I was small, I used to go to his place and they used to feed me there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah. punya, punya, very nice. Punya. So in this city, we we grew up. We expand our like our teenager. Yeah. And there, all these things started to come and increase the Mridanga quality. There was one, the temple president. He was always pushing us to memorize this loka, to memorize Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. So we were living in a very simple place, but with a high intensity of uh, spiritual life. And um, and that was the place where I improved, you know, because I could I I had a good base, but I, actually it was improved there. The but did you have a teacher? Like a no, oh, it was always by myself. 
cool because that's that's what I wanted to say. Like, because from all your life experiences, everything that, that I know you have accumulated from your you know youth, if you had to give like a recommendation, like would you recommend people to send their kids to Gurukul? Like question one, would you? How would you recommend for them to learn Murdanga? How would you recommend for them to learn Shastra? You know, because people have imagination of. <laughs> oh, he must have had a teacher, or he must have been like this or like that. So it's nice to hear. It's, it's the first thing is, is to, to develop the desire. Mm -hmm. For example, when I was 16 years old, I was the best Murdanga player of Brazil. Everybody was wow. saying, who is the best Murdanga? Prito. Prito. Then Prito was going to Nova Gokula festivals, Vyasa, we were coming to Brazil, and who take take Prito and traveling with Prito around. Then in 2007, the Maya Puris came to Brazil, Vishwambar, Bali, and Kishore. Mm -hmm. And when I saw them play Murdanga, what did they realize? I don't know how to play Murdanga. <laughs> because they were doing things with their hand, and I was like, how it's possible? So what did they do? I had to reset my brain completely and restart again. And that point, okay, I had some facility. I went to India. I went to Krishna Balaram Temple. I was living under Indra Prabhu. I was associated with so many famous kirtani like Amala Harinama, Shamananda, and so many others. Mm -hmm. And they could get and increase my knowledge. But it was also because of the association. But for example, if you ask me, uh, would you send your kids to the Gurukul? No. Why kids should be with the parents? But if you tell me, should Bhakti Marga build a system to educate the children that they can come and get the knowledge and come back to their house? Yes. Like weekends or like something like weekends, this. Like weekends, like yeah. something like this? Yes. Yeah. And also I would not deprive Agreed. my children to, to, to go to the normal school because it's also important to you. Because one thing that also had happened, that many of these kids, when they left the Gurukul and they went to the normal school, they didn't know how to handle. Actually, I want this is this is beautiful that you said this now because this was something that I, a few days ago, thought I'd like to talk about this with Bruto and then I forgot this morning. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've observed, tell me if I'm wrong, about ISKCON, is, um, and I say this with all due respect, it, it's that I, I see Iskon sometimes draws too hard a line between devotees and karmis and, and worldly people. Like the line is too thick in a way and the separation is, is too big. And so like this idea of the Gurukul and everything else and people have to then integrate into the society and they have big, big difficulty. I've heard many testimonies like that. And one thing that Guruji does, and I'm not saying that, oh, this is 100% better. It's just, it's, a, it's an approach. It's a different approach is that everything is much more integrated and normalized. There is not so much of this stigma against people of the world. We don't use this term. We don't call them karmis or anything like this. And and the kids are, are just generally com like fine to go in, in normal school. There is no, again, like criticism or prejudice against this kind of thing. Um, in the temple, Guruji is saying, you know, you can dress normal if you want. It's not a problem. You know, there's not this topic somehow of like it has to be like this it can't be like that is it like that from the from the outside it sometimes looks like that that there is this separation i may be wrong and therefore i don't want to make any judgments you see um we use, we grew up listening this verse that uh like the 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 the, the better the better um karmi which we say like the better how do you translate karma? Um, person of the world, worldly the, person, yes. whatever. The better person in the world is the, let's say, the most unqualified devotee. Right. And the, the most unqualified devotee is the better among the karmis. Yeah. We used to say these things. Mm -hmm. And actually, I disagree about it completely. Because I have mm -hmm. met the karmis, let's use the word karmis. Yeah. Normal people. Normal people, which they're amazing human beings. Yeah. And I know so many devotees, qualified devotees, that do so many beautiful things, Shastra, Mridanga, Kirtan, which betray their wife. <laughs> yeah. No, I, Prithu, I'm, I'm with you 100% on this. <laughs> so how can, I, how can I criticize? How can I criticize a person that just wants to have his normal life? But he's respected. He respected his wife. He respected his work. He respected his colleagues. How many times? For example, recently, we saw this movie, uh, Guru Iskon Murder, something like ah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Peacock documentary. And the, the Peacock document, yeah. And, uh, and you see, like, uh, yeah, I know who made this movie. Mm -hmm. 
I know all of them. I know why this this move had to it had to come. The reason why, yes, there's so many legal issues, especially with uh, Isco New York and all these things, because most of the things are were in the name of Kirtan and Adesami and all this stuff. And th that's why they want to show, like, look, we don't have connection. But in other sense, what we see, that this broke the mind. What had happened with this kind of behavior broke the mind completely of so many famous ISKCON leaders. And, I, and I, I could have the chance to speak with them. And I see how they are acting right now. And they are like completely lost. Just like, for example, there is one person who gives an interview there in this documentary and uh, recently spoke with him. And we had a really nice talk. And I could see how much pain he still holds on his heart because of his action. Mm -hmm. Because of these things, we are superior, you are inferior. You know, we have the greatest knowledge, we have the greatest mantra, we have the greatest, you know, everything. But uh, there is a concept of a human being which was lost. Mm -hmm. For example, Shil Prabhupada always used to, to, to walk with the, 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 the news like up. Mm -hmm. He was always like this. If you see any photo of Prabhupada, he was always like this. Mm -hmm. And once one devotee asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, why you, your news is always up? And he said, yes, because I know that my philosophy is better than all other philosophies in the world. In one sense, he should be like that because he should be self-confident, yeah. even to build. Mm -hmm. Guruji also can do the same. Sure, he, and he does. And, and he's accused of arrogance and whatever. And it, it's, yeah. it's confidence, it's different. It's, but, it's his confidence. And, mm -hmm. and when we see that, for example, Guruji, for example, he's in Vrindavan and then he comes these old sons to greet him, he looks like up, up, down. It's not, it's, it's not, yeah, but he, <laughs> why, why he does that? Because he has to protect his, his, his dharma. Mm -hmm. He has to protect it, not his dharma, but he has to. Sometimes he likes to teach people things. He likes to provoke things, but he, okay. Yeah, but. Many reasons. Many reasons, but, but yeah. he has mm -hmm. to act mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. and, and he acts like that with such confidence that he makes it to be respected. Yes, agreed. You know, but one thing is, Guruji can act like that. Me, I cannot act like yeah. that. I don't hold the same self-confidence. I, I think sometimes people take this idea of the, the Acharya as an example too far. Because if he was 100% an example to be copied, then he would not be Acharya and you would not be a disciple. You would also be Acharya because you're 100% equal. And it's not true. And so if Prabhupada or if Guruji want to walk around like this or they want to have a certain behavior or speak a certain way, I think they have the right to do it by those who have acknowledged and accepted them as their spiritual masters. But to then copy them and say that I have the same right or I have the same qualification to, to behave like this or whatever is wrong. And I'm not pointing fingers. I think I, I'm, I'm having this conversation because for me it's important that we learn from everyone's experiences, not just yeah. Bhakti Marga's history and Iskon's history is something else. From the, from the world's history of Vaishnavism and how to to live this out and one of the things that I see Guruji doing so much and this is why I think about this often I, when I studied Bhagavad Gita early on I was in chapter 16 and I was seeing Krishna talk about these demonic qualities and I'm thinking to myself it very much <laughs> appears that he's saying that an atheist no matter how good they are or whatever is is demonic and, and end of story it's a demon you are putting this label on an atheist and so even the worst theist is better than the best atheist the exact mm -hmm. example that you gave i had my thought was that as well because this is how, what it appears to be presenting in the text and i went to guruji and before i could even ask the question he gave a satsang same day and he said you know so many people think just because they believe in god that they are automatically better than everybody else who doesn't believe in god and you cannot find a bigger sign of spiritual pride and arrogance than this because you think that just believing in god or having the right book in front of you or the right tilak on your forehead makes you qualified as a being as a, as a human being to to pass judgment over others and to and to assume that you have something guaranteed in your life that you have been striving for for hundreds of thousands of lifetimes and so the the, the loss of perspective and the size of the arrogance is so big 
And he said, I, I therefore challenge all of you that before you even dream of, of Golokas or Vaikuntas or whatever, that you become good human beings. Because this is your first qualification. You be a good human being. And he says, I know many, many, he said, he said, I'll never forget this line. He said, the best people I have met are on the spiritual path and the worst people I have met are on the spiritual path. It's, they're not in the world. Yeah. They're bad, good, mixed, some mixed thing, but the worst are here. It's the people who, who act like they are better than everybody, even though they're clearly not. They have no qualification to behave like this, right? And so I'm always very careful and I, and I, I, I try my best to self-regulate because you see how quickly pride can come. You see how quickly this arrogance can come. And I'm not perfect. I've had my moments. I just recorded an, ep an episode with Myron. By the time this comes out, I think that episode will be out already. Mm -hmm. And in that, I say, look, I, I sometimes I'll make big claims. To me, Guruji is God incarnate. He is the divine. He is this, that, and the other. But I also have to be self-aware that I've got it wrong in the past. I've said it in the wrong way, to, to the, in the wrong time, to the wrong person. In a, in, a, in a rude way, in an offensive way, I have judged people. I have committed every one of those offenses because I'm not perfect. But if I'm not aware of that and if I don't recognize that and if I don't try at least to, to humble myself in the light of the fact that I have behaved that way, then I'm, I'm you know, we're talking about a documentary, Kirtan Ananda, who, what stops me or anybody else from becoming like that in our own bubble? Maybe not to the same degree, because that is just circumstances. But in our own little world, we can become like him, where you start to think you know better than your guru, and you start to behave in a way, whatever. You know, I don't know him personally, but, yeah, but just from what, it, that. from what it appears, right? It's exactly that. And we can all be a little bit like that in our own bubble, yeah, yeah, in our own minds, in our inner space. We can start to think and behave that way if we're not conscious enough of, who am I, man? Who am I to, to make these claims and, and to, to, to behave in a savage way? And, and I... And, just last point mm -hmm. it goes in the other direction also I also really don't like the people who start beating themselves and saying oh, I'm the f I'm the lowest of the low I know that it is a spiritual principle to see yourself in that way but there's a grounded sincere way to see yourself in that way and then there's the show off version where you say it because you know it's the right thing to say and people would go oh look how humble so you say oh I'm nobody you know don't, don't but you see that the person clearly doesn't believe that they are nobody they think they are something great but they're saying the right things they're showing the right behavior externally and what I love about Guruji is that he just swims through all of that garbage and he just goes straight to the point he looks at you he doesn't believe any show that you put to him if you pretend to be holy, if you act like you're not, whatever. And he'll just say straight away, this is your problem or this is what needs to be solved. And first of all, be a good human being. Jai. He, he, I, I, I use the word mayavad around him. In a philosophical context, he said, don't use that word. I don't like it. And I said, why? Because it's disrespectful. Yeah. People who say this, you, they're not saying it as a philosophical term. Most of the time they're saying it as an offensive term. They mean to say these people are followers of Maya. That's not how those people identify themselves. Why are you doing that? If you speak to an Advaitin, they're not going to say, I am Maya Vadi. They don't believe like this. And so my point, his point was, why don't call, don't call these people karmis? Don't call these people Maya Vadis. Don't call like this. Don't call like that. Even we use more words, like demons. <laughs> don't he say, And he says, don't use these things, yeah. not because it's not necessarily true, but because there you don't have the right to say this. You don't have the... the, the to judge. To, to qualification, to be offensive to people and think that this is going to have no impact on you whatsoever. Yeah, you see, this is what was the main point. Because when I was 14, I was reading the biography of Prabhupada. And there was a story that once a Prabhupada, he was in Varanasi, and he was walking in Varanasi, and there were one Swami sitting under the tree. And the Prabhupada bound down to him. He just like paid his advances to him. And there was a Swami sitting next to Prabhupada, Iskand Swami, mm -hmm. white mm -hmm. one. And he looked at Prabhupada and he said, why did you do it with him? He's a Mayavadi. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada, he said, well, when I came here, when I was 20 years old, he was st still sitting in the, that same tree doing his sadhana. Look, he's still there. How can I judge him? Respect but, the dedication. Respect. But there is another sense where Prabhupada, he says, yes, I have to kill, kick the face of all the Mayavadis. It's tough to listen, but we needed to, to find a balance. But Tough to understand it in the right context, perhaps, or... To, to take it internally in a healthy way. Yeah. You know. And uh, and uh, when I was with Guruji in, uh, in, the, in, the, in Varanasi, 
He was going to the places of the so-called Mayavadis and he was paying so much love and respect. And they saw this is a real Vaishnava attitude. Mm-hmm. I need to respect everybody. I don't know what is inside of, the, uh, of his heart. He can look, uh, he can play one external game. And this external game is just, a, just like a to, to decodify the hook. It has the, the real qualification to be close to him. You know, it, it reminds me, because I, I've, there was a period where Guruji sent me to, to, to debate, to religious debates. And he said, I want you to go and do this. And so I was going to Frankfurt every month and there was like a meeting of Christians, Muslims, whatever. And I was there debating all of them. <laughs> and, I, it, and, and I would prepare myself. So I spent, I don't know, hours and hours studying comparative religion and, and watching different videos. I, I, for there was at least one or two years where I read more Quran and Bible than Srimad Bhagavatam and Gita and all of this, just to mm-hmm. catch up and understand. And I, and I had to understand very quickly and because my my opponents were not doing this, which was, I need to attack the idea, not the person. Because if I attack the person, this is an offense because Krishna is inside that person. He's not inside the idea necessarily, right? People have stupid ideas and I can I can challenge the idea, but I have to have minimum respect for the person because the person can change. It just changed that idea for another one and suddenly he's a devotee. Chapter 9, verse 30, if even the worst sinner turns to Krishna, he's righteous. And so my point is, is that this is such a, a circumstantial situation, so fragile. From one moment to the next, the devotee can break his vows and suddenly become the worst. And everybody can say, oh my God, look at this sannyasi who broke his vows. And the atheist suddenly will hear Harinam and go, I am devotee of Krishna. And the next day you see he has more qualification than me because his character was so good already. And my character is garbage, but I have the right book in front of me. And so I was talking about this with Guruji about criticizing the the um, the ideas, not the people. And he said, that's it. And this is why also people don't understand when I speak, because Guruji is very critical sometimes. He can be harsh also mm-hmm. in his words, like Srila Prabhupada. And the thing is, is that one time he was doing it in the bungalow, Guruji, we were having dinner. Guruji lived in the bungalow at the time. And, and he was, um, he started to criticize some devotees heavily. He, like he was speaking really not nice. And I was listening. But lucky for me, they were devotees that I also didn't like. And so I thought, great, this is fantastic. And I started to join in. I said, mm-hmm. yeah, Guruji, you know, they are terrible. They are like this, they are like that. And we're going in this, ha, ha. And he's like feeding me. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know also that other story and bang, 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 bang. And I was so excited. I thought, nice, Guruji thinks like me. He likes me. We're on the same side. And here are all these bad devotees. And at the end of the night, he finishes. He looks at me and he says... You are so arrogant. I said, what do you mean? I, said, I was watching you the whole night, seeing how quick you are to jump on the, the gossip, to jump on the criticism, to jump on this, that, and the other. I said to him, but you were doing it. And he says, I was just doing it to see if you would join in. I didn't mean a word I said, because I don't judge them. Should I judge you for everything that I know is in your head and that I know has been in your head in all these years? And this is the point. And, and I understood then, what do I know why he says what he says and, and the, the strength with which he says it? And so this is my fear also with, with Iskon and with other movements, whoever. When your guru speaks one way, you don't know what he's trying to do. And one thing is to attack an idea. For example, to attack Mayavad. Mm-hmm. Say, we, we don't accept Advaita. We are not fa- fans of Advaita. Advaita is wrong. And we make some philosophical presentation to show why Advaita is wrong. That's fine. I have no problem with this at all. I have no problem. Yeah comparison of ideas but when you then look at a follower of Advaita and say that's a demon you know I I look around my my brothers and sisters here and I see ex-Christian ex-Muslim ex-Advaitin ex-hippie ex-druggy ex-this and I say well if I had met them in that stage of their life would I have said demons they were not demons they were people progressing and now they have arrived at the point where the Punya matured and now they are Vaishnavas for example and I really want to help everybody in the in the Hindu world, Vaishnava world, whatever, whoever is willing to listen to this, to stop this mentality. Stop to judge. Stop judgment. We can be so much more friends than we are. It's completely. You know, like, even once, if Krishna appears right now, right here, right now for us, which Kirtan he would join to dance? Do you think that he would join the Iskon Kirtan, Bhakti Marga Kirtan, or Gaudiya Mat Kirtan, or Sai Baba Kirtan? 
Ah, I will make no. This kirtan is right. This kirtan has the the, the right tall, the right time, yeah. the right bav. No, Krishna will dance. Krishna is dancing. Harinam is Harinam. Harinam is Harinama. You know, don't limit God. Don't make. Don't put this limitation. Yeah. We created this limitation, and this is a point where we coming back exactly in the beginning. Why, when you ask why many of your friends had left because of judgment, because I'm thinking that I'm better. So many of my friends they say to me, how can I follow a system that they say that these things, these ideas are less, less and less? I cannot judge. That's the point of the the the, the three. Uh, the Kanishta Dikari, because mm-hmm. the Kanishta Dikari, he sees Shastras with emotions. But the Madhyama Dikari, he sees his emotions on the Shastra. He sees that, uh, how can I use it and make me a better person and make my, my service? Yep. Look at how many of these so-called Mayavada, how much they have renounced completely to be where they are. They renounce. They were not in their house, on the, sleeping in the, in the nice mattress, in the nice bed, watching a nice TV. No, they're under the tree, meditating. What into what they're meditating? I don't know. I'm not inside of his heart. I'll tell you a story. Yeah. When I was in Brazil last time, I went to the house of one Iskon devotee. Mm-hmm. He invited me for for a meal, and I went. I had a good time, very nicely treated, and and always was wonderful came back and I was talking to one Bhakti Marga devotee I know who has this tendency to be a bit judgmental against this con mm-hmm. and I said to him can I tell you something even my past you know I have had strong opinions and judgments and I still do about certain behaviors yeah because I have been you know, please understand I have been to many Iskon temples together with Guruji and sometimes he has been respected and sometimes he has not been respected. And so that for me was always difficult because, you know, your guru means everything to you and you go somewhere and they disrespect him. It's a, diff- it's a difficult one to, to have the maturity to immediately say, no, it's okay. It's just, you know, some people are going through some, they don't have some understanding or whatever, you know, don't need to go into that. But I was having this conversation with this person and I said to him, can I tell you one thing? I went to one Iskon devotee's house recently, very nicely, treated me very nicely. His whole house was like an ashram, like a temple. Saligrams everywhere, deity pictures everywhere, one room only for books. There was no big TV. I went to the room, they were sleeping on a mattress on the floor. And they had no need for this. It wasn't that they had a guru on top of them, like putting the pressure. They were not living in a community where this is the expected standard from everybody. They were living in isolation with a guru who lives halfway across the other side of the world. Nobody like scrutinizing their everyday behavior. And yet... For over 20 years, they are doing Saligram Abhishekam every day without fail. Now, I may not think this person is, is perfect or this, that, and the other, but I look at something like that, and I think, how many Bhakti Marga devotees have I been to their house, and I see what I saw there? And I said, I can count maybe on one hand, you know? And so I thought, I'm not going to say that that means that he's better, but I'm definitely not going to say that he's worse because this is something that I have to respect. And I, and I was touched emotionally when I was there. I was like, this is, this is Sadhu Sangha. This is inspirational to a level where I don't care what denomination you follow. I don't care what your philosophy is. Right now, I see you love God and you, you act upon that love. It's not just words. Every day for years, you get up and you, and you do something about it. You follow through with your words. And that I have to respect. I have to respect it because I want that for my life. And I want that for everybody's life. And so I look at the... We have a saint's museum here in Chibitanilaya. Guruji has been collecting for years and years and years relics of Hindu saints. So that means some padukas or a danda or some whatever. Sometimes the plate where they were taking their food or a kamandalu or something. Some clothes. And then we go there and you'll find... Mayavad saints, you'll find Shaivites, Ashaktas, you'll find whatever. You'll find people that if you read their writings, they probably would criticize somebody like Guruji. (laughs) Definitely. Srila Prabhupada relics are there. So many things are there, Mm -hmm. right? And I had people come before and they go, why? Like, I thought you guys are Vaishnavas or I thought you're like this or like that. Why are you glorifying these people there? And I said, "You, you misunderstand. 
Guruji is not glorifying their philosophies or their ideas. He's glorifying their person, their character. Because you look at these guys, and maybe he's an Advaitin, or maybe he's a Shakta or a Shaivite. But that Shaivite, for 30 years or for 50 years or whatever, every day got up and chanted Om Namah Shivaya and was doing his sadhana. And he had full renunciation and discipline and this, that, and the other. And I look at that and I think, how can you not just... How corrupt is your mind that the first thing you see when you look at that person is you have a different philosophy to me, therefore we're enemies. Why you don't see, wow, what dedication, what discipline. If I could have a, a drop of that, if I could be inspired by that, that is wonderful. You know, you just make it to me to remind when we were in Navagokula, in Yogokula farm yeah. with Guruji, one of a proper disciple, he was sitting with Guruji in the table. And he was having a lunch with Guruji. And uh, when Guruji he finished to eat, he asked for the Mahaprasada from the plate of Guruji to eat. And I will tell you something. I was shocked. Why w- I was shocked? Because, yes, I know this devotee. He can go to any East Contempo around all of the world. He will be treated like, uh, wow, proper disciple has arrived here. Let's pay respect mm-hmm. to him. And, uh, and when he asked to eat the Mahaprasada from the plate of Guruji, he shows us a, a, such a beautiful kind of uh, humility that uh, this is a main Vaishnava because Vaishnava is the one who can recognize another Vaishnava. And how you can recognize another Vaishnava? By accepting his Mahaprasada. So when Guruji, he accepted the relics of the saints, he accepted that, it, look, look at his attitude to God. Yeah. And this is from devotee, he told me that. How he was really... And, and he, even he said, yes, I'm trying to become like Narada Muni, who ate the remnants of the saints, and uh, he could become Narada Muni. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Guruji, he, Guruji said to me once, he said that the best experiences he's had with Iskon people has always been with the direct disciples of Prabhupada. Mm-hmm. He said that they have always treated him much more with respect and, and have a very different mentality. And he said sometimes what he sees is that the newer generation, they didn't have contact with Srila Prabhupada, some of them got it and some of them didn't get it. Like the the mentality, the way of being. And so he yeah. says, so I don't criticize too much. Yeah, he said once to me. But you see, they, he made that distinction, which I appreciate because by him saying that, it made me also go back from my judgmental position where I was like, what will Bhakti Marga look like when Guruji is gone? You know? <laughs> That's a good point. 20, 30, 40 years from now, Guruji is gone. Will we have people who I would look at their behavior and think, that's not the Guruji I knew. <laughs> that would not represent. And I'd be sad about that, you know, and I could I could easily see a scenario like this. And so, again, I'm, I'm not too quick to judge on that. But yeah, but as Guruji is a founder, Chari is different because his behavior is also different. Sure, of course, look, Bhakti Margan is gonna, never going to be the same because never Prabhupada be same. and Guruji are not the same. Exactly. Different behavior, different pattern of conduct. Is it even also when Prabhupada, he started his mission, he was 70. And it was the 60s and 70s, and which was, was a very different time. Different time. Guruji started his mission, as you said. You were you met him, was, But you know. when you met him, he was 27. I'm yeah. 33. <laughs> Imagine Guruji with the 33, how much responsibility he were already having. So it's a different time, different concept. And that's what uh, I feel that uh, I want to help to break this mentality that uh, I need to judge. Yeah. You know, if you know me, if you know my story, if you know from where I came from, just appreciate. Just appreciate. Ah, but why Paramjyoti is following this guru? If he will turn against Lokanath Maharaj, did he turn against the Prabhupada? No. Please, if this message is possible, Lokanath Maharaj, I love you. Shri Prabhupada, I love you. I have nothing against. The point is, I was when I when I when I came to Bhakti Marga, it's not that uh, you you know like so many people who had left Iskon and they went because my guru he doesn't preach about uh, Rasika Bhava, he doesn't talk about Raganuga Bhakti. I have uh, so many times listen things like this. He cannot give me my Siddha Siddha Pranali. He cannot give my Siddha Deha. Mm-hmm. Who cares about these things? Who cares about, you know, for those who know, Siddha Deha means like your internal relationship with Krishna. Or who cares about these things? Your he, role in the Nitya Lila. <laughs> no, man. Just learn how to be a nice human being. He's teaching me how to be a nice human being. 
Once someone asked my brother, are you happy that your Preto is falling, Swami Vishwananda? And my old brother, he said, yes, I'm very happy. Because I know Preto since when he was born. And I see that he's really much better human being right now. Yeah. And this human being is exactly it. When I went to, to Nova Gokula to, to say, oh, can Guruji come here? I ask everybody, please, the only thing that I ask you, don't treat my Guru Deva bad. You don't need to, to do a bisheka to his feet, you don't need to of give course. a garland, you don't, but just don't treat but him bad. They treat him but very they nicely. Treat it very to, nicely. Be, to be completely yeah. honest. Very yeah. nice. They treat it very nice. And, and when some people come here, Guruji also treat it really nice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is the Vaishnava attitude. Vaishnava behave, Vaishnava Sadachari, what we talk. You know, like how can we be nice? Just provide them. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm most happy because, you know, like once I saw my mom, she was looking at the picture of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And she was looking to that picture and she was crying. And I came to her and they said, Mom, why are you crying? And she said, because God is sweet. If God is sweet, the devotees of God, they also should be sweet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, if you take one drop of the honey, will change the honey itself? We're not. Uh, the honey will be honey. Yeah. So if you are not uh, sweet, where did you get this bitterness? Because you didn't get this bitterness from your parampara. I'm sure about it. You didn't get this bitterness from Srimad Bhagavata, from the Bhagavad Gita, yeah. or whatever book you, Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Guru Gita, you didn't get yeah. from there. I'm happy to hear what you say only because when I was, um, <coughs> I have to think now, when I was maybe with Guruji already for eight, nine years, I went to him one time. I had just gone to a, a conference with one of the Swamis here and we had met um, some is ISKCON people were there as well. We met with Radhanath Swami. We were talking with him. There was some stuff. And mm -hmm. um, and I came back thinking, all the way back in the car, <laughs> I could do a better job if I was the Swami in that moment. And it was a horrible thing to think about my the Swami that I was traveling with. He did fine. But I was thinking in my head, I could be better. <laughs> and I came home and I went straight to Guruji's house. I rang the doorbell. He let me in. I said, Guruji, please make me a Swami. And he you were at, not Swami? At that time, I was not Swami. I was Rishi. Rishi, okay. And I, I went in red. And then I went to Guruji and I said, please make me a Swami. And he looked at me and he said, why? And I said, because I don't want any obstacles in my service. I don't want any red tape. You know, like in the crime scene, there's the red tape you cannot cross. I said, and today I felt it because I was with my superior and he was speaking. And of course, out of respect, I don't correct him. I don't interrupt him. I don't speak over him. I respect it. And he looked at me and he said, what, what, why do you think you would do a better job? And I said, because I, I know I will. <laughs> I believe in myself. I know I will. And he said, no, I will not make you. You know, Maybe later, maybe another time, but not like this. And then later when he did give me sannyas and, and made me a swami and everything, he had a talk with me. And he said, you were not wrong that you would do a good job. But you were wrong to come and ask me. You were wrong to come and, and tell me that the reason is because you would do a better job than somebody else. He was doing his job in his way. You can do an excellent job. It don't have to compare. You don't have to be better or worse or whatever. And so I, see, I saw you were not ready for that. Mentality was wrong. Yeah? <laughs> Service was good. Mentality was wrong. And since that time, I always had one thing inside of me, which was... I want to be so conscious that every time I speak and, I, and I'm around people that they understand that I am representing him and that I understand I'm representing him. And if I can just make people think something positive about Guruji because of my character, I'll be so happy because I can represent him and I can be somebody who amplifies his glory, not somebody who diminishes his glory. Yeah. Because I've met people like this also. And I, and I had a story told to me, and they said, and I use this in my teaching often, which was, imagine you go to somebody playing piano, 
and they're playing horrible, right? And you ask them, who is your teacher? And they say, my teacher is so-and-so, Aradaka. <laughs> Aradaka. But they say, but I'm just beginning, you know, I'm, I'm the, please, I'm not, I'm not so good, but I'm, I'm practicing and I will get there. Immediately, my judgment is gone, right? But if they say, yes, yes, my teacher is Aradaka and they're very arrogant and they think they are playing fantastic and there's so much of this pride and arrogance and really they're playing horrible, right? My first th- thought would be, I will never go and learn piano from Aradaka. This Aradaka must be a big, big rascal here teaching this guy piano and then he thinks he's the best. But if the guy is humble, says, no, I know I'm in the beginning, you know, I will follow my teacher and everything will be fine, you know? I can forgive anything because the character is good the, the awareness is good if the quality is not good that doesn't matter because somebody can be in the beginning I will not judge them on the quality I will judge them on the quality of the character if I have to judge at all but human beings we have the tendency so my point with Guruji is the same I sometimes tell devotees please if you don't know Shastra you don't know philosophy you don't know this you don't know that it's fine it's fine but display good character and everybody will forgive you and everybody will think highly of Guruji because look at his devotees they may not have knowledge but at least they are good people respectful they're not arrogant. They know that they are in the beginning and they, they have no problem admitting this. That is humility. That is sincerity. And so I, I, it makes me happy when I hear something like, you know, your brother saying you're, you're a better person now because I see that this for me is a much better sign of real progress and growth than how many verses you can quote me. Oof. How many beats you can play on Murdanga, mm. you yeah. know? It's more important to be a human, better human being than all these things. Because you'll reflect your spiritual master yes. better. Yes, yes. And that's what that's what I want. If if you ask like if you ask me right now, what do you want from Guruji? I just wanted to represent you nicely. I just wanted to when people comes in touch with me, and they talk with me, they say like the feedback that I get often. Wow, your Guru Deva is so beautiful. Your Guru Deva is so amazing. You know one thing that I love? I had brought uh, some many friends here. Many. Not many, but many. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all of them, when they leave, they never tell me like, uh, wow, so incredible, Guruji, he did this miracle, or he materialized that, or he did this. All of them, all of them, Revati, some Revati, they tell me, the kata, the satsanga, the talk of Guruji, it's different. The knowledge, they give the knowledge, the way that he gives the knowledge. It's like he's giving Krishna the most high in the highest way with a simple word. He makes Krishna to become accessible to you. This for me is more priceless mm-hmm. of any other feeling. You know. Nice. Like the you know, I love to listen to the satsang of Guruji. And these people, they know also a lot of Shastra, a lot of verse, a lot of things. But uh, they didn't have the chance to meet someone who could make a Krishna accessible. Because always when I look at Krishna, was something that was very far away. Krishna was looking far away, distant. And they have to walk, 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 walk. And the Guruji he brings this simplicity. But the difference is, all these people, they know the description of Krishna. Yeah. Guruji knows Krishna. <laughs> yeah, it's different. It's two different things. <laughs> it's two different things. I know the description of Krishna and I tell people about his words, his behaviors, his nature, <laughs> but Guruji tells them about Krishna because he knows Krishna. Yeah. This is the difference. Yeah. And how we know that he knows Krishna? Uh, because he it's clear. <laughs> you you have to you have to live a life with him, you have you, to experience and then you understand. Like, it's it's like your mother sees Jagannath, this is God. And I said I look at him and I'm like, well, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. This is not uh magic <laughs> it's not magic it's not and he doesn't need to to do that you know so that's why i invite you you know i invite you if you if you have any judgment i just invite you you can come here i pay your expenses in the ashram don't worry oh careful now it's <laughs> gonna get a lot of uh people accepting okay i just need to bu- bu- put some uh, um, w- within reason with uh, common w- sense with common, common sense, sense you know yeah. at least you've been in iscon for 10 years <laughs> <laughs> some qualification <laughs> some qualification yeah but uh, no but that's nice man yeah and uh that's what uh 
you know, it's not means that I don't want the divorce of Pacto Marga to get. You know, we, we really wish to everybody knows a lot of Shastra, a oh, lot of, course, of, of Mridanga course. beats, uh, bhajans, you think. I'm just putting that very clearly in a, in a very second level. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm for yeah. all of that, but I'm I'm happy that so far our priority is is devotional character and, and personality and, and human humanity and yeah. the rest will come. The rest will come and come with time. For example, now I saw how Kesh, the son of Anshu, is playing Mridanga. He's really good. He's learning the base, you know. Uh, Myron's daughter, Nishta, I'm probably going to, I asked him already, can I get her on my podcast? Can I speak with her? Yeah. You know, she's what, 11, 12 years old, but so nice. So nice. Mahabharat knowledge, very nice. Yeah. So imagine what these kids will become in the future. Yeah. So when we look, you know, like uh, I feel really happy because I can be the meter f for them. Yeah. You know, like to be a meter, like, oh, look, Prita, he came from the same. Well, we cannot just imagine Kesh now he's how old? Ten? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Imagine when he be twenty five. Be nice. Wow. I hope <laughs> so to be cool. around to see it all. Yeah. Me yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me too. You know? Or Nishta or Whatever, whatever. Next generation. The next, next generation. generation. Yeah. And uh, that's what uh, we need. We need the people with a good heart, a nice simplicity, simple people, but with uh, intensity, intensity and bhakti. And Guruji, he's building that. Your songs, you're also building. Something I, Guruji said to me two days ago. Mm -hmm. if, correct me if I'm wrong, Prabhupada, he said that he would live on in his books, in his in his teaching, no? Mm -hmm. When he was leaving his body. And so Guruji was saying to me two days ago, he says, you know, the Guru lives on in his teachings. That is true. I agree with that, he said. But even more importantly, the Guru lives on in the heart of his disciples. And that I I stuck with me because I want that to be understood by all of us that no matter where he is in the world and even when he departs this world one day that he will always be here and I have to therefore behave like a walking temple like a walking simhasana you, almost you see once Saindra Prabhu he was in the given a satsanga and uh, in, in this satsanga he was saying that when the guru depart he share his qualities, all his qualities among his disciples. Guruji and each Guruji said the same. And he said that each one of the disciples will take one quality. For example, if Guruji is a good singer, one will become a really good singer. Another one Guruji is a good preacher. He likes this type of shatter he will get. So I also that's why I always I nail to this point the how it's important to learn how to appreciate the qualities of other devotees. Because when you see that quality you are not seeing just uh, You oh, Krishna, the, I'm the intelligence of the intelligent. Yeah, really. but you were seeing the quality of your Guru Dev into that devotee. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that that quality is unique. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Well, Prithu, thank you very much. This thank was a you. really nice conversation. Thank I'm you, sorry sir. to anybody if we offended anybody. It was clearly not our intention. At least no. I speak for myself. I'm, my goal is to, to, to help bring people together who are otherwise judging each other unnecessarily. And so I'm... Man, the word is huge. There is enough room for everybody. For sure, for sure. And I mean, even us, us, we have come together and become friends through the times. Yeah. And I think everybody else can do the same. And I'm, I'm really nice, happy for the conversation. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Swami. You're doing great work. Jai Gurudev. Jai Gurudev. Till next time. Ready. See you.